Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is lecture 20 on control system engineering one. We are discussing chapter seven, steady steady rows. Uh, so far we have actually covered up to article 7.5. Today we are going to start article, uh, in this lecture we are going to start article 7.6 steady state error for a non emotive feedback system. So for whatever the system we have discussed uh, related to the steady state error analysis, all of them was actually unity feedback. Now, for, uh, we'll start uh, discussing the steady state error in terms of non unity feedback system. So, but uh, one thing we actually want to use the same formula that we have derived for the unity feedback system that is uh, E steady state equal to limit S tends to zero, S E of S or in terms of S R of S plus uh, one plus G of S. So now uh, previously our system was something like this. Okay, so unity feedback. So for the unity feedback, we have used this formula. For the non-unity feedback uh, system as well, we want to use the same formula. So let us uh, find out the equivalent model first, then whether we can, uh, with minor modification, the same formula can be applied or not. Let's see that one. So say that we have a input transducer, G1, G1S, then we have uh, the summing junction of the feedback and our planned transfer function can be G2S. Then we have uh, the feedback G1S. So sometimes uh, the input signal may not be an electrical one. In that case, we may have to use a transducer G1. So this is how it works. Now, as you can see, Whenever uh, there was a unity feedback, it, this branch was always uh, the error branch, okay, so E. But now it is not error because we have some feedback. And now this point, what we have here is uh, H1SCS, which is not CS because previously it was RS minus CS, then directly you can say that it was error signal. So this time, instead of calling it an error signal, we are rather calling it an actuating signal, EA. So EAS is our actuating signal. So uh, what we are going to do uh, is basically we convert this block diagram similar to this one, so that we can obtain uh, G equivalent S instead of uh, this whole branch, uh, whole block diagram here. And so that you can convert this back to this diagram, something like this, G equivalent S, then you have a feed, unity feedback again. Okay, so we already know how to do the block diagram reduction so that uh, uh, knowledge will actually help us to obtain this uh, diagram. Now, uh, instead of using uh, a new formula, rather we are using the same formula. What will be the changes? Changes will be simply, G will be replaced by G equivalent. So R S R of S uh, one plus G equivalent S. So you are using the same formula whatever we have learned so far. So let's start uh, using the block diagram reduction. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, take this one inside, okay? So this one is only supposed to be multiplied by R S but since we are taking it uh, in this branch here, you want you to multiply together. So H1 has to be divided by that one. So very simple idea of the block diagram reduction. Okay. So now you have G1, G2 here, G1 is G2. G2 is Then this is our CS, and in the feedback part, we have H1S divided by G1S. Always try to give the symbol as correctly as possible. Try to 
use the block diagram reduction method. Now, uh, this one, the U1 and U2 multiplication, we can actually give it a name uh, G of S and the feedback, uh, we can give it a name H of S. Okay, so uh, all these are actually notation, not necessary. It always has to be H of S. In some other book, they may use some other notation, but as long as it is in the feedback path, it will be considered as a feedback. Okay, so this is your RS, and this is your normality feedback, uh, negative one. So now this is uh, this is still is our actuating signal. Okay, now uh, we have to bring the unity feedback. So we bring one unity and uh, part, and then rest of them we have to simplify. So G of S. Now we bring out, we only have one feedback path H of S. So deliberately we create one path. Uh, we need a feedback path. So definitely since we bring one, so we have to subtract one as well. So we are bringing another one, which can be minus one. Okay, so they're getting canceled by each other. So now, since uh, these two are in parallel, this one and this one is parallel, so we can write something like this. Forward path is in G of S, and then this is actually an additive, so H of S uh, minus one. Okay, and then we have our unity feedback. Okay, so now uh, we have to apply the feedback formula here. Then now if we apply the feedback formula, then forward path gain divided by one plus forward path gain into feedback gain. So finally, eventually what we're going to have is a unity feedback system with forward path gain will be here. Forward path gain is uh, G of S one plus uh, forward path gain into feedback gain. So G of S and then uh, H of S minus one. Okay. So a non-unity feedback system is actually converted into a unity feedback system. Now uh, this is our forward path gain. So we can simply apply the same formula. Okay. So we can slightly modify it further. So it will be something like this, G of S divided by one plus uh, G of S, H of S minus G of S. Okay, so now uh, you know, actually in this point here, now it is again converted back to error signal E of S because now it's still the division of uh, the subtraction of the output from the input. Okay, so this is our error signal. So finally, what you can say that G equivalent S is actually G of S one plus uh, G of S H of S minus G of S. Now, if you can find out the G equivalent S, then you can easily find out the corresponding value uh, of uh, the static error constant that is KP, KV or KA position, velocity or acceleration based on these values, G, E, S, uh, limit S tends to zero, S, G, E, S, or limit S tends to zero s squared g e s. Now using the same formula, we can easily find out what should be our uh, steady state error for a non-unity feedback system. Okay, so now uh, let us look at one example. Uh, and then the things will be uh, more easier to follow. So example 7.8. Example 7.8. So this time uh, the input transducer is not provided. 
rather uh, if it is not provided then we can always assume that these values we want so we don't have to uh, bother about that one too much or maybe they already simplified uh, inserted that g1 inside g2 and they have given us simply g of s okay 100 by s uh, into s plus 10 so this is our g of s and in the feedback part what we have is uh, 1 by 1 plus uh, 1 by s plus 5. So this is your non-unity feedback system. So this is our g of s and this is our h of s. Now uh, what we have to do is we have to figure out uh, h equivalent s. Okay so we have to figure out uh, sorry g equivalent. So our, uh, our g of s is 100 by s into s plus 10 and h of s is 1 by s plus 5. So g equivalent s which is uh, g of s divided by 1 plus uh, g of s h of s minus uh, g of s. Okay, so now just uh, simply put the values. Uh, it is uh, 100 by s into s plus 10, then 1 plus 100 by s into s plus 10 into 1 by s plus 5 minus uh, 100 divided by s into s plus 10. Okay, so just uh, simplify a bit. Uh, then what we have is s into s plus 10, 100, then take comma of the whole uh, maximum uh, numerator here. So s into s plus 10, s plus 5. So simply what we have is s squared plus 10s uh, into s uh, plus 5 minus 100 minus 100 into uh, s plus 5. Okay, simply we can see that this parameter can be cancelled, this one, this one. So this s plus 5 will be going to the top. Uh, so basically uh, 100 into s plus 5, then we have uh, s cube plus 15, s squared plus 50s minus 100 minus uh, 100s minus 500. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, we will have a plus sign here. So just simplify the thing. So what we have is uh, 100s plus 500. And then uh, this will be s cubed plus uh, 15s square minus uh, 50s minus uh, 400. Okay. So now, as you can see, this is uh, the type of the system is uh, zero because there is no common factor of S. So this is our G equivalent S. So since uh, it is a type uh, zero system, type zero system, we can say that uh, we have to go for the evaluation of KP. So KP is uh, limit s tends to zero, g equivalent of s. So simply all the terms uh, s terms will be replaced by zero. What we'll be having is uh, minus 500 by minus 400. So basically minus five by four. 
So the definition of the steady state error in terms of your KP is uh, one by one plus KP. Okay, so now uh, one by uh, one minus basically five by four. So what we'll have is one by four minus five by four. So basically which will be minus one. So basically minus four. So what is the meaning of this negative sign? That means actually uh, the output is larger than the input. Okay, so now uh, for the step input, so we are uh, we're supposed to have output one, rather we have a larger output. So that is why uh, the negative sign is there. So basically this is how if you have a non-unity feedback system, uh, in that case, we actually have to figure out uh, the system response. Sorry, the steady state uh, uh, error. Now, uh, the next thing is uh, actually uh, our uh, st uh, topic is, uh, next topic is the steady state error of non-unity feedback with disturbance. Okay, so uh, now we are introducing the uh, disturbance into our non-unity feedback system. So, Again, this is our controller, G1S. Then we have uh, a junction where actually the disturbance is coming, D of S. Okay, so next is uh, the plant itself, and that is uh, G2S. Then we have C of S. And then non unity feedback is H of S. Sorry. Okay. So this is R of S plus minus. Now we can call this one as a controller. This may be our plant. And this is our feedback. Now again, uh, we have to actually find out the contribution of uh, our disturbance to the steady state error. Okay, so start deriving the formula again. So fundamental thing is, uh, as always saying, that is E S equal to uh, R S minus C S. So we have to calculate the value of C S out of this block diagram, then you can actually, actually have to replace it here, and then you can easily find out what should be the value of yes. And also then uh, a steady state will be limit s tends to zero as e of s. Okay. So what is c of s? Uh, as you can see here, whatever the signal we have is basically rs minus HS, CS. Okay, so this signal will be multiplied by G1S, then D1 will be added, then whole thing will be multiplied by G2S. So what you can say that uh, this is basically R RS minus uh, HS, CS, which will be multiplied by the controller again G1S, and with that, our disturbance signal will be added. And then finally, the whole thing will be multiplied by G2S. Okay, so if we simplify it, then what we are going to get is uh, G1S RS, plus, uh, sorry, minus G1S, HS, CS, plus DS, uh, this has to be multiplied by G2S. Okay, so multiply again. So G1S, uh, G2S, 
आर एस माइनस जी वन एस जी टू एस एच एस सी एस माइनस सॉरी प्लस जी टू एस बी एस so cs can be taken into one side and after simplification what you can find is cs uh, 1 plus g1 is g2s hs equal to g1s uh, g2s rs minus g2 plus uh, G2S BS. So after simplification, C of S is equal to G1S and G2S uh, RS by one plus G1S G2S HS plus G2S uh, DS by the same factor. So one plus G1S G2S, HFS. Okay, so now uh, if we replace the value of C of S into that equation, so E of S will be RS minus this factor. So if we take common RS here, so what we are going to get is uh, one minus G1S, G2S by one plus G1S, G2S, H of S, whole thing because we have RS in this term as well as in the main formula, minus uh, G2S by one plus G1S, G2S, HS into DS. Okay, so this is uh, our uh, error. Now we should go for the steady state value of it. So basically steady state is equal to limit S tends to zero S E of S. So um, uh, we have to uh, place the limit so limit s tends to zero s then this whole term that is one minus g1 s g2 s by one plus g1 s g2 s hs then you have rs minus limit s tends to zero g2 s one plus G1 is G2S, HS, BS. Okay, so for simplification, actually we can assume that uh, both uh, RS and DS is one. Okay, so let RS is one by S and DS is one by let us state change uh, so both both of them the input signal as well as uh, the disturbance both of them have a state uh, type of uh, nature so uh, finally what we are going to get is uh, so this s and this rs uh, sorry there should be s here as well so this s and this d of s Will be cancelling each other because both of them are one by s so what we are going to get is e infinity is equal to limit uh, s tends to zero one minus uh, g1 s g2s by one plus g1 s g2s hs minus limit s tends to zero G2S by one plus G1S, G2S, HFS. Okay, so now let us uh, start the analysis. So before starting the analysis, what is our objective? There's two portion again, one 
this portion is because of the input and this portion is because of the disturbance so we can say this is e or infinity for of course a non negative feedback system and this e d infinity so uh, what is our objective our uh, objective is to make steady state error equal to zero so this is our objective objective so how can we obtain this objective so basically one is uh, your limit is only applied to this portion of the equation because one is always one so so this uh, limiting value if you put the limit here so this limiting value should give a magnitude one if this gives a magnitude once and one minus one will be zero this term will be zero and also this term has to be zero so if both the term is zero only then our objective can be fulfilled which is zero steady state error. so now based on these two criteria uh, actually you have to derive uh, what should be the type of uh, each of the blocks so what should be the type of g1s okay so what should be the type of g2s and also what should be the type of hs and so uh, we know that system type is related uh, to our uh, steady state error Okay, so based starting with uh, this equation, first of all, what we can say that this uh, limit uh, uh, of the denominator cannot be zero. So this is condition one. So condition one is limit S tends to zero, mm, one plus uh, G of S, H of S, and sorry, G one S, G two S, NHS. Okay, so this cannot be zero because if it becomes zero, then uh, one by zero will be infinity. So yeah, this term cannot be, first term cannot be zero. So that is why this uh, term cannot be uh, zero. So this is condition one. So what is next condition? Condition two, condition two is uh, uh, limit S tends to zero, limit s tends to zero g of s cannot be zero as well okay so why this limit cannot be zero basically for simplifying this one for simplifying this one what we can do is we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by g2s so what we are going to get is one by one plus g2s plus g1s h1s Okay, so this is what we are going to get. So if uh, G2 uh, limit tends to zero, because we have to apply the limit here, S tends to zero, as well as the limit here, S tends to zero. So if you now we apply the limit to the G2 and if G2 is becoming zero, so one by zero will be infinity and one by infinity will be zero. Okay, so which is uh, good for this one because we want to make this term zero, but at the same time, this term here will also be zero because the same idea we can also apply here we can divide uh, with g2 so uh, what we are going to get is g1s by one by g2s plus uh, g1s h1s okay so this will be also uh, becoming zero but it, it, it has to be one uh, then one minus one has to be zero. So that is why uh, limit S tends to zero, G2 cannot be zero. So what is left is then basically either uh, limit S tends to zero, G1 has to be zero. So two option is left, either limit S tends to zero, G1S has to be infinity. So if one by infinity, it is zero uh, or limit S tends to zero h of s has to be infinity then one by infinity is equal to zero but limit uh, s tends to zero h of s cannot be infinity because if it is uh, becoming infinity and this term will be becoming zero at the same time this uh, term here will also be zero okay so if it is zero then one minus zero so your steady state will already be there so only choice actually we have is we have to make this term zero and this is only becoming zero if the type is type is one. 
So uh, for the step response, if uh, type is uh, zero, then you can find some constant value. If the type is one, then actually you know, one by S is becoming zero. So one by zero is becoming infinity. So this is how, uh, why your G1 has to be type one. Okay, so if G1 is uh, uh, type one, what about G2? G2 is also, it is not infinity, not zero. So it is, it has to be basically type zero. And what about H1? So for finding the H1, so the, that was your condition three. Now condition four uh, uh, is uh, since uh, what we have seen is that for this term to be one, what we need is if we divide both the denominator and the numerator by G1 and G2, what we have is one by one by G1s, G2s plus Hs. This is the condition. Now, then we have to apply the limit. Okay. So we already know that uh, G2s is a limiting value of G2s is infinity. So this term is one by infinity. So basically, this term is becoming zero. So what is left is only limit s h h s tends to zero g of s h of s. So if this magnitude of this one has to be one. Only then this one and one will give you one in this term. So one minus one will be zero. So you will have zero steady state. So what does it mean? Uh, this uh, the type of this one uh, because we are we are applying something like this s tends to zero g of s when we would have a finite value whenever it is a type zero system so we can predict that h has to be a type zero signal this is not only the condition also the magnitude of which has to be one then one by one will give you magnitude one so finally what you can find is this term is becoming zero and this term is becoming one and eventually g1 is type one g2 is type zero and G H one is type zero as well as your magnitude has to be the magnitude has to be one. So with all these conditions, we can actually obtain zero steady state error for a non-unity feedback system with uh, our disturbance. Okay. So next thing is uh, sometimes. Uh, the problem may also ask for what is the steady state value of our actuating signal. Not always that we look for our error signal. Sometimes what is our actuating signal? We may also be interested about it. So steady state value of uh, actuating signal. Actuating signal. So a generalized one with maybe the input transducer can be assumed a, a system like this. Okay, so now this is our actuating signal EAS. So let us find out what is the value of actuating signal uh, E of S first, uh, then we'll apply S into E of S, EAS uh, with the limiting value S tends to zero. So that will give us EA infinity. So a steady state value of the actuating signal. So now let us uh, calculate what is EAS. So we can write that EAS is basically Rs into this one. So basically G1S into Rs minus the feedback that is coming. So basically H1S, H1S into Cs. So we have to find out what is the value of Cs. The value of Cs is basically uh, G2 into actuating signal. So we can also put that one here. So H1S, RS, the value of uh, CS is G2S into EAS. Okay. 
Okay, so ES can be taken in one side and we can simplify a bit. Then EAS is one plus uh, G2S H1S equal to G1S RS. Okay, so the actuating signal is basically G1S by one plus G2S H1S into RS. So H1, uh, sorry, G1S may always not be there because it is a input transducer. So sometimes it will not be there, then we can assume that the magnitude may be one. Okay, so finally, your uh, EA infinity, that steady state value of the actuating signal is becoming limit as tends to zero. SEA, S, that is a limit S tends to zero. Um, S, G1S by one plus G2S, H1S, RS. So quickly look at one example, example, example 7.9. So the same example actually, the previous one uh, that we have used for non-unity feedback system, same one we apply here. So 100 by uh, S into S plus 10. Then we have C of S, then we have uh, feedback, which is one by S plus five. Okay, so what we have to find out the actuating signal, steady state value of the actuating signal for two different kind of uh, input. So input may be step or input may be uh, para, uh, sorry, ramp. So for this to find, we actually have to find out what is the value of our uh, steady state value of actuating signal. So the formula that we have derived, G1 is definitely not given here. So G1 is one. So we can assume that this parameter is one. So now our actuating formula is EA infinity is limit S tends to zero, S R of S one plus G2S, H1S. So this is our uh, G2S and this is our H1S. Okay, so we'll put the values uh, then S uh, if for the RS for R is equal to one by S, uh, EA infinity is limit S tends to zero. Uh, S and one by S is getting canceled out what is left is one by one plus 100 by S into S plus 10 into one by S plus five. So basically what we are going to get here is okay, so now um, what we are going to get here is, as you can see, uh, this is if you set the value of s equal to zero, so then one by zero is infinity. So one by infinity is zero. So final uh, steady state value if r is equal to one by s is becoming zero. Now, uh, what will happen if r is equal to one by s square? That is ramp input. In that case, e infinity will be limit s tends to zero. Then we have um, S into one by S square into one plus 100 by S into S plus 10 into one by S plus five. So as you can see, this uh, S and square is getting canceled out as is going to the denominator. So uh, it will be something like this S here, as well as this S will be canceled out. So if we set the limit equal to zero, this parameter is becoming zero. Now, well, this is zero, this is zero. So 100 divided by 50. So basically one by two is your final steady state value of the actuating signal. So this is how we can actually figure out uh, the uh, value of the actuating signal as well. 
Okay, so last topic of this chapter, that is uh, section 7.7 .7 is sensitivity. Okay, so is, a sensitivity, is sensitivity a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, human being, human behavior, if you consider, we want a sensible person. Okay, so always rectifying mistakes based on the experience uh, attained. This is always appreciable. But uh, in case of control system per perspective, sensitivity means uh, actually the degree to which the changes in the system parameter affect the system transfer function. So basically, if your system has parameters, and the parameters are changing and that is affecting your transfer function. So that is causing a change in the transfer function is as well. Okay, so changing the transfer function is, means the performance of the system is also changing. So uh, from control system perspective, sensitivity is not a good thing. Okay, so we want to design some system. So irrespective of any variation, the system should be working fine. Like we have uh, uh, designed a control system that is supposed to be working uh, with a temperature of 30 degree, like in this country. But somehow if it goes to, a, if we go to a cold country or a hot country, whether the system is still performing the way it should be, performing on or not. So this is what is called sensitivity, okay? So changes in the parameter causes changes in the transfer function or the performance of the system. So that is what is sensitivity. And from control system perspective, this is not a good thing. We always want a less sensitive, sensible system. Okay, so now say a, a, a function, let's go for the derivation of the formula. So we have a function f equal to k by k plus a. And for any uh, particular instance, the value of the k is 10, the value of the a is 100. So we can easily find out what should be the value of f, that is 10 by 10 plus uh, 100. So we see value 10 by 110. So 0 0.091, so this is the value of the function. Somehow, because of some changes, uh, now uh, the value of the A is being changed to 300. So let us look at the value of uh, the function now. So 10 by 10 plus 300. So basically 10 by 310, that is giving you 0 0.032. So as you can see, the parameter is increased, the function has decreased. Now let us look at the amount of the increase in the parameter and the amount of a decrease in the function. So we express it in terms of the fractional change. So fractional change in parameter, parameter A, is basically uh, 300 minus 100 divided by 100, the actual value of what it was. So basically two or 200% of change. And because of which the fractional, fractional change in function, function F is 0 point, final value is 0 0.32 minus 0 0.091 minus the original it was 0 0.091. So basically minus 0 0.65 or 65% decrease in the system function. Okay, so sensitivity is derived in this way. The sensitivity of a function with respect to the parameter is given uh, that uh, fractional fractional change in function function f with respect to fractional change in parameter 
parameter A, where the functional change in the parameter is very, very small. So from the above calculation, as you can see, here is del P tends to zero and is basically del F by F divided by del P by P. So P by F can be taken out and limit and del P tends to zero del F by del P is basically nothing but derivative of the parameter by function equal into derivative of the function with respect to the parameter. So this is the definition of our sensitivity, mathematical definition of the sensitivity. Let us look at one example, the example 7.10. Example 7.10. So our definition of the formula is basically sensitivity of the function with respect to the parameter is parameter by function into derivative of the function with respect to the parameter. Okay, so this is a formula. Now one control system is given, unity feedback system. Uh, in example 7.10, Okay, so this is unity feedback system. And what they wanted us to calculate is, we have to find out uh, the sensitivity of the closed loop transfer function P with respect to the parameter A. So this is what we have to find out. So this is our open loop transfer function G of S. So basically at first we have to calculate what is our T of S. Then we have to find out the sensitivity of the T of S with respect to the parameter A. Okay, so G of S is uh, K by S into S plus A. So T of S unity feedback system, G of S by one plus G of S, H of S, H of S is one. So this is what we have. So K by S uh, into S plus A by one plus K into S into S plus A. So S into S plus A denominator will be getting cancel out. After simplification K by S square plus A S plus K. Okay, so now what do you have to do? This is now we know what is our closed loop transfer function. We have to find out the sensitivity of the closed loop transfer function with respect to the parameter A. So which is uh, the parameter by the function. Function is that one, K by S square plus A S plus K. Then derivative of uh, the function with respect to the parameter that is k by s square plus a s plus k. So this is the formula, we just applied the formula. So keep it as uh, it is, or you can just simplify a bit, a s square plus a s plus k by k. Now, if we take a derivative of it, we can take common of the k out, bring the k outside, k is a constant. So what we have is d by dA of s square plus a s plus k to the power minus one. So now what k can be canceled out straight away. So a s square plus a s plus k. Now if you take uh, the derivative of it, what we are going to get is s square plus a s plus k definitely first of all we have a minus one then to the power minus two then we have to take a derivative of this one which will give us s so what we are going to get here is uh, take this one this one and this one so we have minus a s 
then we have s square plus a s plus k then this one will be one by s square plus a s plus k whole square so this one and this one is getting cancelled out so minus a s by s square plus a s plus k so this is your sensitivity sensitivity of the closed loop transfer function with respect to the parameter now let us look at another example example 7.11 7.11 so another unity feedback system is given similar one k s s plus k so for this one again what they're saying is this term we have to find out the sensitivity so basically the same transfer function uh, sensitivity of error sensitivity of error with respect to the parameter a so we know the formula the formula is basically simple the parameter by the function then d uh, e by del a okay so now first thing that we should do is we have to find out what is the error for this particular system so again the system type is important the type is one so if the system type is one then actually you should go for kv kv is limit s tends to zero uh, s and g of s g of s is this parameter here so s is getting cancelled out so what we are going to get is uh, k by a and now we know that error is basically one by kv that is a by k okay so let us apply the formula so a by error is a by k then the derivative of uh, the error with respect to a which is a by k okay so now what we have here is uh, a is already cancelled out and the derivative of a is also be one so and then k and k is cancelled out so eventually the magnitude will be one so this is your sensitivity of this particular problem so to make it more easy, a few other examples given, two more examples, I think it is given. Example, example 7.12. So this time, this is our, our path transfer function, k by s plus uh, a, s plus b. Now oh, this is your uh, unity feedback, CS, RS. So uh, now again, what uh, they are interested, uh, you know, what they want us to do is, we have to find out the value of the error, sensitivity of the error with respect to the parameter A. This is what you have to figure out as well as sensitivity of the error with respect to the parameter k. So these two we have to figure out. So first of all, we have to find out the error. That is the first thing. And the error is basically uh, the, the type of the system here is a type zero. So there is no common factor of s. There is no pole at the origin. So this is type zero system. So for type zero system, we have to figure out what should be the value of kp. Okay, so the kp is limit s tends to zero g of s so basically k by a b now uh, the error is basically one by one plus kp that is one by one plus k by a b so what do you have if uh, a b plus k then divided by a b so a b can be going up uh, so this is your error now so what you have to do is a steady state and sorry and the sensitivity of the error with respect to the parameter a so parameter 
divided by the function that is AB by AB plus K. Then derivative of the function with respect to the parameter. Sorry, maybe by K. Okay, so now uh, we have a, a derivative of the division. So uh, you can easily simplify the value here. This one can be cancel out. So AB plus K by B. And also from this derivative, the B can be taken out. So B in del, uh, del A of K divided by AB plus K. So this B be canceling out. Now derivative formula, you have the uh, derivative of the division you have to apply. And then what we are going to get here is AB plus K dot one minus AB by AB plus K whole square. Okay, so this one, this one getting cancel out. What is left is AB, AB is also cancel out. So what is left is K by AB plus K. So this is your uh, sensitivity of the error is respect to the parameter A. So next is uh, sensitivity of the uh, error with respect to the parameter K. So now a is a parameter k by a error, error that is uh, ab by ab plus k this is function, then d by dk of ab, mm, ab plus k. So ab is a constant this time because we are the, taking the derivative in terms of k, so this one, this one getting cancelled out. So what is left is k into a B plus K. Now, if you take the derivative of that one, <coughs> we'll have a negative sign. Then we'll have a derivative of that one, eventually, which will be the squared term and then finally one. So now this one is getting canceled out. This one is getting canceled out. So minus K by A B plus K is the sensitivity of uh, is the sensitivity of the error with respect to the parameter k. <clears throat> so this is how we have to find out the steady state error. Lastly, this is I think a uh, skill assessment exercise. Uh, so now the forward for transfer function is given as uh, k times s plus seven uh, is a square plus 2s plus 10. Okay, so for this particular system, we have to find out the error with respect to the parameter k. Okay, so sensitivity of the error with respect to the parameter k. So sensitivity of the error with respect to the parameter k, so that is basically k by error, then d del e by del k. So first of all, uh, error we have to calculate. So now for this particular system, as you can see, this is a type zero system. So we should go for the value of kp. So the value of the kp is limit s tends to zero g of s, so all the s's will be replaced by zero. So 7k by 10 is our kp. So the error is basically one by one plus kp. So one by one plus 7k plus 10. So simply this will be 10 by 7k plus 10. So now uh, let us uh, go for the sensitivity of the error. So k by the function that is 10 by 7k plus 10. Then uh, del by del k of 10 by 7k plus 10. Okay, so 10, 10 is constant, cancelled out. So what we have is uh, K 
into 7k plus 10. And then if you take the derivative of this one, minus 1 will be coming, and square term will be coming 7k plus 10 square as well as 7 will be there. So uh, what you can say is that uh, this one is getting cancelled with the square term. So minus 7k by 7k plus 10 is our sensitivity of the error with respect to the parameter k. So this is all about uh, the chapter 7. Basically, we studied the steady state error in terms of the unity feedback system. Then uh, we introduced disturbances. Then we studied non-unity feedback system. We also introduced a, a disturbance there. And then finally, the sensitivity of the error with respect to the any parameter also calculated. So this is the end of our chapter seven. So in the next class, inshallah, we'll start chapter eight, which is root locus. Okay, see you in the next class, inshallah.